Welcome to May 12th. It is Friday and I'm Kimberly from Fat Quarter Shop and we're going to change up the live stream a little bit. So Socialites just ended and that was our free quilt along where we gave you lots of patterns and lots of things and so we didn't want to leave you hanging with no um, sewing stuff. So we have uh, changed the format just a tiny bit. So the first Friday of each month I'm going to show you the Bountiful Charity Quilt. The second Friday, which is today, I'm gonna do a Sew With Me series. And with that, it's gonna be totally casual. I'm gonna pick a pattern, I'm gonna pick different designers, and I'm gonna pick different fabric. And so basically, I'm gonna be grabbing a, a pattern and a fabric that I like, and I'm just gonna put them together. We'll see what I come up with, but what you're gonna see is how I think through a pattern and how I change it to be kind of the way I piece. The third Friday of each month, we're gonna do a different trunk show. So next Friday, you'll see a trunk show. And the fourth Friday, I'm gonna do the normal live stream I used to do, which is like, um, my sew along progress. So like, it'll be like all my sew along progresses. And that way, um, it's a little bit more streamlined and, uh, it's not so jumping around and around and then people won't ask, oh, well, why didn't you show this this week and not that? So it'll be a little bit more streamlined. I think you guys will like it. And then um, I am gonna show each week at the end, I'm still gonna show what's new in the store, new quilt kits, new sew alongs, that kind of stuff. But this is just to add more content and make it a little bit more streamlined. So we're gonna kind of jump right in because this is gonna take kind of a while. And I've never done this before kind of free form, so I'm not sure how it's gonna go. So we'll see. So basically this pattern came in recently. It's called Trust Fall. It's by Prairie Grass Patterns. And when I saw it, I was like, oh, that looks fun. It's scrappy. I could use this as something scrappy. But then I thought, no, let me just do it with Jelly Rolls the way that um, April has it designed. So the designer is Prairie Grass Patterns. It's April Rosenthal. and Y'all know that I love the Simply Delightful collection. And so we have these little junior jelly rolls. They're called Easy Street Simply Delightful Junior Jelly Rolls. So this is only part of the collection. It's 20 of the SKUs from the collection, not 40. So basically, I'm going to use these two. And I starch them. Well, Teresa starched them for me. And you actually need five more strips than this, but... I have plenty of this fabric at home from the leftover from Barnstar Sampler, so when I finish it up, I'll have some at home to pull from. But I'm gonna move one out of the way. So you need uh, 45 strips, but really the point of this is just to show you techniques and different things I do and how do I get my quilts so uh, meticulous. And then I thought this would look good in this binding and this backing. So this is, um, a stone stripe and this is off-white petal so I'm gonna these will be starched and I'm gonna set these out of the way so um, but what I'm gonna show you I can't the thing with this is with this it's a paid pattern so I cannot show you the full instructions. so I have to move this out of the way so that I don't give you all the instructions um, but this is going to be more about technique. So I'm going to move this out of the way where I can see it and you guys can't. And in each of these stacks is 20 strips. So I'm going to pick five to start with. And basically, you know what I'll do is I'll kind of put the prints together because I'm not going to want the prints together. Like I'm not going to want these in the same row. So I'll put like this. I'm just going to kind of divide them into stacks of what I think looks good. Well, actually, I'm not. This is what I'm going to do. These need to be a certain length. Ten and a half inches. And when I'm working with something, I'm never going to cut it exactly 10 and a half. I'm going to cut it a little bit longer. So I'm going to cut it at 11. Well, yeah, 11. And I'm going to move these out of the way to use later. 
because I'm not gonna cut the whole pattern. I just wanna cut enough to try it. So I'm just gonna cut this first, I'm gonna cut 20 pieces. And these are jelly roll strips, so they're two and a half inches. And April does put in the pattern, if you wanna cut rectangles, what that would be. Okay. And I'm kinda considering the salvage when I do this. And I'm just kinda keeping these. But I don't, um, I don't want to cut the entire quilt because that would be um, too much for this live stream. But also, what if I want to change things a little bit? And of course, ask me any questions as we go of um, things. But I do always, um, I do always kind of change my patterns a little bit. I'm surprised you starched pre-cuts. Okay, so Kathy, on a jelly roll, the pre-cut shrinks this way, not this way, so you're fine. And I am gonna be showing you a trick that I use on jelly rolls. It's probably not like the best idea, but it's what I do. And y'all are probably gonna be like, okay, that's weird. But it is something that I do with jelly rolls because jelly rolls kind of drive me crazy in general. Okay. So let's talk, so I just have some 11 inch rectangles. Now, jelly rolls, supposed to be two and a half. That is two and five eighths. I'm not gonna trim it down here. I'm gonna show you what to do in the next step or in a couple of steps. But from here, I'm gonna get some different design boards and I'm gonna kind of put the pieces on different design boards and put, I'm gonna do sets of five. So I'll have four design boards, four sets of five, So I'm gonna kinda do this. And the first thing I'm gonna be trying to do is not, I'm not gonna pick the order it goes in. I'm just gonna pick the colors that look the best. And I'm gonna try to keep where I don't have duplicate prints on each because you don't wanna have the same print within each. So, and I'm just gonna kinda pick what I think looks good. And I will be honest, I do overthink this sometimes, but like this has gray, so I'm not gonna put gray in there. That needs some blue. So I'm just trying to make sure it has enough color. That. It's probably too strong for that. But you definitely don't want these dots together because that's just too much. So I will tell you these drive me crazy. Um, it's great to have lights, but they, they drive me crazy. So I'll have to, I think that might look better here than there. But these, these kind of prints drive me crazy. But I think that looks good. So. Let me know if you'll see anything. Um, thank you to Super Chats from Susan Anderton and from the Bathola. I look forward to all your videos. Thank you for what you do. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you. Happy Mother's Day to everybody. So kind of looking at this, this is the ugliest one, but I'm gonna kind of arrange the fabrics where I think they look best. I think that one, I don't like how this one and this one have the same print. So I might have to put that there and that there and separate these. And in the end, I'm being really OCD. You don't have to be this OCD because you're gonna see when you look at this quilt, it's totally scrappy. But I still plan it just because that's the way I am. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do one board at a time so y'all don't get confused. But at home, I would do all boards at one time, but I'm gonna do one to show you. But what I'm gonna do is this is gonna be the top and then I'm gonna add. So I'm gonna sew this together. 
I'm going to press and I'm going to stop because I'm going to show you my tip on how to get jelly rolls right. Another thing is when I put these together, I'm not going to sew a quarter inch. I'm going to sew like much less than a scant quarter inch and I will show it to you on the ironing table what I do. And by the end of this, you'll, it'll make sense. So because I'm kind of trimming as I go, I can sew fast and not worry about the seam. Okay. So did I say red was at the top? Okay, I'm going to press all of these. You're going to press one direction, but my iron is asleep. So I'm going to let it warm up. I'll answer questions. Piggy's good. Um, thank you to the super chat from Cecily Fisk. Happy Mother's Day to Kimberly and all the moms on FQS team. Yes, happy Mother's Day to everybody. And thank you to the super chat from April Jackson from earlier. Do I concern myself with the grain of fabric, straight of grain, or cross grain when assembling your blocks? I don't. Now, when I iron, I like this to be super flat. Nothing right there. Nothing bumpy. Okay, so then it goes back on the board like this, right? Okay. So, when I sewed... That is not a quarter inch. That's like a one, like a three eighths of an inch. Because, like I said, I want to keep this. This is going to be the start, and I'm going to trim that down later. But as I go, it should be two and a half minus a quarter inch, which is right here. So it should be two and a quarter, and I'm going to trim it, and it's exactly what it needs to be. Okay, now when I add the yellow, okay, I need to be on the quarter inch seam here on the gray now. See, this is where I'm gonna complicate you guys because I'm already getting faces in here. Um, I'm gonna move this down. I'm gonna sew exactly a quarter inch away from this gray, but I'm gonna move this a little bit over so that when I trim, I have room to trim and it's gonna matter when all of this starts having to uh, line up because it has to be exactly a two inch seam. So hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so from here, this needs to be two and a quarter. And I cut off a lot, and that is how I get my quilts perfect, by fudging seams over and over and over. Now, same thing. Add this green, sew on the quarter inch seam on that yellow, but give a little bit of room so I can trim. Now the key to this pattern is, and I'm not going to, um, basically you have to sew all your seams, the, press your seams all the same direction. Now when we start subcutting, I'm not going to give you the formula that April has, because if I do that, that'll be giving away her pattern. But it, pressing in this pattern, you have to follow the pattern that April has. And we have it as a PDF and a paper pattern. So then we're gonna add our last one. And I have kept all my salvage on the same area because I made this bigger than it needs to be. I want to be able to 
trim that down so it's exact because that is my personality. So same thing. So on the green, leave a little bit of room for the blue. Okay, so these should be two inches, exactly, and they are. And that's how I got them exactly two inches. Now I need to trim the outside. So I'm gonna do two and a quarter here. And then I'm gonna do two and a quarter on the other side. That one's probably not gonna have it as much. So this should now be 10 and a half. Now I'm gonna to refer to my pattern real quick just to make sure I'm doing the right thing. And I need to trim this, it needs to be 10 and a half. This is all going one direction. I'm gonna make four of these real quick and we're gonna do it doing the same method and I'm gonna answer questions. I'm not gonna subcut these down yet because I might confuse you. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna keep, I'm gonna sew, put it back on the board. Sew, put it back on the board and hopefully put it back in the right spot. Or should I just do it one by one? I probably should do it one by one so I don't confuse y'all. Okay. So I'm going to be adding to the green side. So I'm just going to be doing the same thing and I, hopefully I haven't confused any of you. I want to invest in a few design boards. Which size would you recommend? I would say I use the 14 inch the most, the 10 inch the second most, and the seven inch I use a lot in the car for cross stitch. Do I starch pre-cuts? So I starch anything I use. Now, if I need the full 10 inch square, and I'm starching a 10 inch square and I need a full 10 inch square, I will buy more. I will buy a fat eighth or something like that because I pretty much don't make anything without starching. And this iron I'm using is a Rowenta Perfect Steam Pro. 
In the past, I've also used the Aliso brand. Okay, so same thing. They're all one direction, whatever direction that is, they just all have to be going the same direction. And if you started with the exact size, you wouldn't have to trim this down, but that's just one of the things I do. Okay, so I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna make four of these because I think four of these will turn into a block. Are, when are more design boards coming in? So they come in as Lori Holt uh, makes them. So with each collection, she makes some. And so as they make them, we carry them. And then as they discontinue them, we discontinue them. So blue is going to be at the top. I need to remember that. And so as I'm doing these videos, one thing I'm going to try to do is just think of different techniques I do at home that maybe I've never shown you. Because that's the number one question I get is, how do you get your quilt so perfect? And I really, you don't have to do it this way because this might drive some of y'all crazy. If a color is too strong, do you ever use the back of a fabric so it softens the look? I haven't. That would probably drive me crazy, but. I cut length of fabric strips and starched them and the width shrunk, not the length. What did I do wrong? Um, I don't know. Uh, I just. Start, I just starch all my pre-cuts. I've never really thought about yardage. I don't know. That might be a question we asked Teresa or Jocelyn, who are smarter than me and can figure that out. <laughs> The presser foot I'm using on my machine is a Juki quarter inch foot. It didn't come with the machine, I purchased it separately. Now, looking at this, this is why I do that. Do you see how it bows? That drives me crazy. That's why I'm doing it this way so that when it's sewn, it's exact and I don't have a bow. How many quilts have I finished so far? So this year I'm in the 20s. I'm gonna, I'll probably be at 50 or 60 at the end of the year. I, um, I'm gonna do mass sewing this weekend starting today at four o'clock. And my sewing room is a disaster. Oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed. It's driving me crazy, it's so messy. So I'm gonna sew as many things as I can so I can clean it up. And I do this at home where I throw all the scraps on my floor. I know it's gonna drive Jordan crazy, I'm sorry. I do this at home though, and 
the problem is at home I have a kid that will clean it up. Um, but I feel bad. But this is what I do at home. So I'm trying to replicate. I literally floor. Like I and I do big batches. Like I won't put that in the in the um what do you call it? The what do you call it? Vacuum. I will um pick up I'll just clump up the big pieces. Okay, here we're gonna also do aqua at the top. Do the same thing. Do I have a date for rustic gatherings? I think it's June. We'll look real quick, but I, um, so let me know if you, what you guys think of this method. Do you like it? Do you think it's stupid? Do you think it's like, have you ever done it before? May. So, um, hopefully soon, because it is May, right? Do I find the automatic thread cutter cutting the thread too short? No, I don't. On my machine, it doesn't do that. Now, I used to have a different machine, and I felt like it would do that, but it was so many years ago, I don't even remember what machine it was. No, my Juki is like, I love this machine. Have I tried sewing from the opposite ends to prevent the bowing? Yes, I have. On this one, I'm not. And the reason why is because um, I'm doing it this way, and I don't think I need to do that because I'm trimming it as I go. And also, because I have to keep it pretty tight, I'm afraid if I do salvage straight, salvage straight, it's going to get short and then I won't be able to trim it exactly because, you know, if you get too much salvage. So I'm trying to line it up this way for that. And then when I get to the next step, I'm not going to know which side is which. When I get to the second part, I cut out. When I get to the second part of the strip. Shrinkage, ha okay. Shrinkage has to do with the grain of the fabric. Fabric cut across the grain will shrink differently than fabric cut with the grain. Yes. Will I be getting more of Lisa Bonjean's one inch papers? Yes. So I have her triangle gatherings book in stock and I have her triangle paper um, on order. Some of it's in stock, some of it's on order. So sometimes you have to pull your fabric. Okay. okay, so 10 and a half, and then, um, I'm gonna cut this up first. Uh, does Piggy like to be in there when I take the strings everywhere? Oh, Piggy doesn't care about no strings. He sleeps through it. He just, I will say he does not like to be in my sewing room lately. And I think it's the noise, ever since I got the iron, he does not like to be in there. And so, um, he does not. So he's usually in there when I'm working, but if I start sewing, he'll just go to the door because he doesn't want to be in there. Okay, this, see how I got a little bit of salvage? It'll be fine. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to look at the back. Oh, thank you to Carol Nottingham. $20. Are you not doing the summer picnic sew along? Yes, I am. I'm confused about attaching fabric B to half square triangles. 
Email nova at fatquartershop.com and she can help you. Number two, do you have to sign up to reserve for the mystery pattern each month or just one time? For designer mystery, it comes, but if it's a mystery that's free on our site, you have to just come each time. So it depends. Okay. Now here, I'm just making sure they're all going the same way because it matters. Okay, now I'm not gonna show you all the detail because I don't wanna give away her pattern, but that is important, so I'm just gonna give you that hint. Okay, I'm on, okay, so. You have to pay attention to the way the fabric is pressed and if your fabric is horizontal or vertical. And you're gonna refer to your pattern to do this part. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna label these one. I'm gonna cut two like this. So I'm gonna do the second one the same way. And I'm going to label them one, and then in my pattern, I'm gonna hand write the note one. So that when I go home, I remember which one is one and which one is two. Okay, so these are ones. Now you have to do this a bunch more times. I'm just showing you one block. So now this one, I think I did that one right. I hope I did. And I will say this pattern is written really well because it has lots of arrows and I love that. So hopefully I'm doing these right. Is there a cutting board I would recommend? Um, I use the Kimberly's Cuts, which are mine. Those are boards, but um, as far as cutting mats, I mean, I usually use Lori's or Creative Grits. Okay, now these are twos. Okay, now I haven't, haven't done this part, so I have to figure this out. Put them together. So I'm gonna pick one, one. Hopefully this works. I'm gonna take one, one and one, two. I'm thinking this will work. And it works. Now, here, when I do this, my seams do not nest. Oh Lord, what did I do? Well, my seams are not nesting, so whatever I did, I did it wrong. So that goes that way. So my seams don't nest. So this is a great example of testing a block and it not working. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take a one and a two and I'm gonna go to the ironing board and tell you how to fix it. And that, that probably means I did it wrong. I'm not blaming the pattern. That probably means I did it wrong. Okay. Now here, I can either change one direction or I can just press open. I'm just gonna press open. Easier, it won't mess with anything. I'm just gonna press open and that's gonna fix the issue. And then you guys at home, when you're testing, maybe y'all cut it, did it the right way, but this is what happens when you do a pattern for the first time. There are gonna be mistakes. There are gonna be things and you just have to figure out how to work around them to make your quilt work. And sometimes it comes together perfectly and other times it does not like just like this but there is always a solution now hopefully this will work I'm pretty sure it will but it's gonna make it go longer because obviously I was counting on my seams to nest but I'm pretty sure I made a mistake this pattern would definitely work with leftover jelly roll strips it would also work with just uh, rectangles and there is, in the beginning of the pattern, a list of how many rectangles you need. 
And that was what I was originally thinking of showing you a scrappy quilt. But then I thought, no, let me just use a jelly roll because then I know it goes together. Will the steam shrink the fabric? Because I starched at the beginning, it will not shrink any further because it shrank in the first, um, when I starched it. Okay, so now that I've done that, I'm gonna pin like crazy. Okay, now what I'm gonna do, you're gonna think this is weird, is I'm gonna pin right here. That is where it exactly lines up right here. That will just kind of keep it like a secure place. That's not required, but I do it. Okay, now here, I'm going to pin. Let's see, and I'm gonna answer some questions that have come in while I pin. And this is bias. You wanna see what bias is? That's what bias is. That is how your fabric will stretch if you don't pin. Now, this is not bias, doesn't stretch. Took me about 10 years to figure that out. And I'm not kidding, I'm being totally serious. So when you're working with bias, you have to pin. How about using best press instead of your starching method? Um, that's what Lori uses, use whatever you like. Best press is obviously better for the environment because it's not aerosol, but it's a lighter weight and I like things to be crispy. So fit, whatever you like. How do you tell which direction the green is going on your fabric? The grain, you mean? Um, so jelly rolls, you can tell because the salvage, the way the salvage is going, or the salvage. Okay, so here, it's, I'm gonna sew, I'm gonna try to sew as close, I'm gonna sew exactly with a quarter inch seam and I'm just gonna pull these out right as I get to it. Okay, one thing is if you took this and just pressed open, since that's bias, or if you just press without setting your seam, it is gonna go wavy, wavy because of its bias. So you have to set your seam here. When do I think the fabric Tiny Frights will arrive? Okay, now here, press to one side. I'm gonna press open now, actually. Yeah, I'm just gonna press open just to press open. So since I started, let's finish it. That is, okay, Tiny, Tiny Frights is by Ruby Star. It is expected in June. It's hot, that's why I'm doing this. It's kind of hot. Okay, so now I'm gonna see what size this came out. 10 and 3 eighths, which is what it's supposed to be, and 10 and 3 eighths, or 10 and a quarter. So yes, it came out pretty, pretty good. Now I'm gonna take these dog ears off. And this is one unit. Now, let's be creative and think about, oh, this, I'm gonna be my OCD self and do this. You could do this with one and a half inch strips. You could do this with three and a half inch strips. You could do it with two and a half inch strips and instead of starting with 10 and a half, start with maybe 12 and a half and it would be bigger. You can do all kinds of things with this same pattern being creative. Okay, so I've got one unit done. Now what I'm gonna do is kind of keep that there and I've got my ones and my twos, but I have to iron all of them open. So I'm gonna go do that, but I'm gonna keep them together as one and two. <clears throat> I've been using scrap bags from Sew Sampler Box. Love them, but my cat eats the plastic. 
Oh, the Riley Blake scrap bags. Oh, that's kind of funny. Kind of not, but yes. That's... You did it right. You just needed to separate the top cut with the bottom cut. You need to separate the halves as you cut them. Yes, probably. So at this point, I'm beyond. That's why I'm showing you that I make mistakes all the time. But I, um, especially if I'm on camera, I cannot think as quickly as when I'm off camera. So I'm going to just press open and that's going to be my solution. But I'm glad you told me I did it right. Have you ever had an FPP quilt done and F, a foundation paper piecing so along? I do. We have two planned right now. We have some big stuff planned with, it's with a, it's a Wimma foundation paper. It's really hot. This iron is hot, hot, hot today. Any idea when bright stars will arrive? Bright Stars is in stock. It's by Teresa Kogut. The quilt kit might not be in stock though. Oh, thank you to Tina Frank. Thank you for all you do, Kimberly and FQS team. This live stream is so helpful. Yay, thank you. I just wonder what you guys think because it's kind of, um, like my piecing, sometimes I just take too long because I do all these extra things. Okay, now here, there's these little dog ears now, so I'm gonna clip those off. Oh, that one doesn't have it. Yeah, so basically I should have moved the stacks. It's all right. Pressing open is fine. Now I'm gonna put my clip of two because if I don't, I will for sure get them messed up. Have I planned my next visit to Lori Holt? Um, I'm gonna go in November, but we haven't picked the exact date. Thank you to Susan Arda for the super chat. When you use Best Press, do you use seam or iron? Okay, that's a personal preference. I use faultless starch and I um, use steam all the time, but that's not, you don't have to do it that way. Is the designer mystery still, oh gosh, I cannot talk. Is the designer mystery still scheduled to start in June? Yes. It will ship around June 10th. The finishing kit will ship around in July. Okay. So this iron this morning is so hot. I feel like my fingers are on fire. And I know you're not supposed to do that, but I do it all the time. So just, that's probably why I have this white thing down. I think I've starched these so much that the starch is sticking together. Hot, hot, hot. And it's kind of crazy because with this fabric, I'm gonna have like 10 quilts with it or something, but I just loved it so much. Have I tried the silicone finger covers? Yes, but I don't, to me it's just a waste of, like, I don't know. It'll just slow me down. I love learning good habits from you as I learned a quilt, thank you. And remember, you don't have to do it the way I do it. I do things a little bit extra. Sometimes I'm a little extra. So, Would I ever consider making a quilt using reproduction fabrics? I've made plenty in the past. I haven't done any recently. Um, I don't think I have any planned right now. So here, this has too much blue. So like, I 
and then that has a lot of gray right there but this is why you should do things scrappy and not have everything so planned that won't work because that's two reds Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm just going to go with this. That's too much red. Oh my gosh. That's too many dots. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to go with this. Even though I don't like that those are two dots together. Oh, that's, no, that can't, I cannot do that. That's two reds. I'm just going to do the two reds together. It's fine. Now, obviously, when you're making this quill, you should have huge stacks of these because you're not just making one block. I'm just showing you one block just for the fun of it. And you can always put in suggestions of different, like a different pattern. Is there a pattern you want me to test? One thing that I'm trying to do with these is not look at the pattern too, too much before I get online so that you can think of, so I can like kind of show you my thinking progress process. But um, obviously um, I should have thought through whatever <laughs> I just mistake I just made. But I actually prefer my quilts to be pressed open because I think they look better. So in the end, I think it's fine. Everything you cook the nerve, eventually you cook the nerve endings, then they're numb. Ask me how I know. That's funny. Extra is good. Yes. Does that iron have a nice long cord? It does. I feel like it has a long cord and I also feel like the cord between the iron and the base is a little too long because when I have to vacuum, it's like crazy getting everything out of the way. Because I put trash cans on top of my cutting table where my iron is at the same time because I'm trying to get everything out of the way. I really like getting to see the new pattern. Excited about the Friday reschedule. Thank you. And I think we've kind of picked the next couple, but um, I'm always open to ideas. Now, if you ask me to go do some crazy foundation animal that's got a million jillion pieces, I'm probably not going to do that because that's not something I would do at home. And so just kind of keep that in mind. And if you ask me to do applique, I'm definitely not going to do that because I only think I should show you what I actually think I know, not what I know I don't know. Um, because, yeah. Oh, thank you to Susanna Pastoric. Thanks for making Friday mornings fun. It was so funny because before the live stream, somebody asked, is this going to be live? And I was like, I hope it is because I came all the way to work. I hope it is. Oh, will the mystery Halloween have a panel in the kit? No, it's not. And that panel has sold out. Yeah. How was the cruise? Oh my gosh, it was so fun. I talked about it in another day this week, but it was so fun. So we got to hear Dr. Henry Lee speak. Obviously, if y'all Google him, you will recognize his face. Um, he worked, he works for um, people who hire him. I don't know how to explain it. Um, Cece Moore, she talked about DNA. Paul Holes talked about DNA, different types of DNA. And it was really fun. I want to go back. I want to go live on a cruise. Okay, now here, I'm gonna tell you what happens right here at my house. I'm gonna poke the heck out of myself, but I'm just gonna know that I'm gonna do that. And by the end of the day, I usually have like a cut, a burn, something. Okay. Somebody's having issues, but that's not me. That's funny. Okay, 
so there's one. One more, and then we'll almost have a block. Jill Giggy says, DNA and genomics has been a game changer. Yes, it's crazy. And when, I will be honest and tell you that when Cece Moore was talking about it, she's been on lots of TV shows, but she pretty much developed a way to do genetic genealogy. She teaches people how to do it, but she uses um, some type of, I think it's like a stripped, I don't know, she uses a different type of DNA than some law enforcement do. But it was a lot about, you know, different things. A lot of it talked about how, you know, these, a lot of it was about cold cases and how, you know, they only get involved if the law enforcement will work with them. Because if law enforcement won't work for you, you're wasting everybody's time. Could I show how to make how to sew a table topper using Creative Grid's 60 degree ruler? If Jocelyn can come up with something, I've never I I am not great at I will tell you I'm not great at uh, bias, but I'm sure she could come up with something that's that I could do. Cause she she her she has a math brain and so she can think of things and we think how did you even come to that? Am I going to September Crime Con in Orlando? I have not decided. I, I highly doubt I'm going. So my daughter is in drill team and so I highly doubt I will miss that. I, if there's a football game, I'm not going. If there's not a football game though, but I don't know. I don't think my kids like it when I leave. But it was funny when I left because my husband was like, gosh, you do a lot of a lot of stuff. Like, you take them to Starbucks. She, he's like, you're wasting money. You cannot take them to Starbucks every day before school. And I was like, well, I've been doing it for a couple years, so I'm not going to stop now. Okay, so now I think you just put these together. Look how pretty it is. I love it. Okay. Oh, my gosh. I have way too much red on the outside. That looks good. Does it look good? Oh my gosh, it's so cute. Okay, so then I'm gonna pin this because you know, I'm pin, pin crazy. Yeah, so I don't know if I'm gonna, I, I would love to go to Crime Talk. I love it. It's like, I love to learn about how they help people, how they help families, how there's so much victim advocacy. I, you know, I really think, let's say I no longer had this business. That would not happen, but if I did, I would just go be a victim advocate for free and help these people because it is so sad because in this world, I think the victims do not get enough attention and I think that they get stepped, stepped on quite a bit. And in fact, right now, in five minutes, the jury comes back to start re-deliberating on the Lori Dayville case. And you want to talk about victims, there's a lot right there. And I think that the family does not come first. If you look at everything that people do in the government and the law, lawyers, you know, like, I mean, there's loopholes and they just do whatever they want. Um, like at the beginning of the trial, the judge was like, the the lady who killed her kids was trying to say that the the victim's grandparents weren't the grandparents because he was adopted. 
That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. That's the most inhumane thing I've ever heard. If you adopt someone that is your child. Okay, I'm gonna sew. The thread I'm using is Aurifil 2000. I pretty much just use that. I used to change every now and then like to a gray, but I kind of stopped years ago. I just use Aurifil 2000. My son, one of my sons will do all the bobbins. It takes him forever. Um, but he only has to do it like every two months. And so if he ever wants chore money, he'll say, can I do bobbins? And I say, yes, go fill them up. And he'll fill them up. So sometimes they're always full. It depends how much, if he wants chore money. I love this. It's so cute. This is awesome. So again, think outside the box. One and a half inch strips, two and a half inch strips, three and a half. You could do this with four and a half inch strips and do 20 inches rectangles and you would have one baby quilt. It'd be crazy. So, um, and it's so easy and so fun and so scrappy. So I just love the pattern. I was inspired because I thought, oh, that's really cute, really creative. I also, one thing I liked about it is you could, most people have a jelly roll in their stash. It doesn't even require background. So for the binding, um, the pattern does call for half a yard and I'm gonna do five eighths of a yard just because I felt like half a yard was just a tiny bit short if you starch. The first quilt I ever made is downstairs. Do I have a nice machine then? No, I had a machine from Walmart. I'm actually happy that that came out that way because I think it looks really good with it. Um, now that, I need to press, these are, let me fix that real quick. What crime shows do I watch? <laughs> the question would be what crime shows do I not watch? Okay, I watch pretty much YouTube. Uh, I watch Crime Talk. I watch Hidden True Crime. I watch Pretty Lies and Alibis. I watch The Lawyer You Know. I watch um, East Idaho News. I watch Dateline. I watch Dateline. There's like another Dateline that's like Dateline after the series. I watch, um, I watch all kinds of stuff. I pretty much live on YouTube. That's all I watch. I don't even watch TV anymore. I love Joe Kenda though. Okay, so now I'm gonna go across this. A junior jelly roll, so a normal jelly roll has 40 strips. A junior jelly roll has 20. Dun, 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 dun. And my seams look pretty good. And so I was gonna point out a couple of things. Right here, you can see that little white from the salvage, but because it was less than a quarter inch, it didn't come out in the final product, so that's good.
Okay, I'm gonna do an all over press. Okay, now one thing I am gonna do, I kinda always do this, is I'm gonna kinda, kinda cut the outside just to get it nice and straight and get any threads off. And, okay, so the pattern calls to make nine blocks. So that took me, on camera, an hour. Off camera, <laughs> it probably would have taken me 30 minutes at the most. So, maybe four hours, five hours, something like that. Really easy, but I do think it'd be a great scrap quilt. But, um, what I really wanted to talk about was, Because I trimmed as I went, everything is exactly two inches. Now with a jelly roll strip, um, let me see some jelly roll strips. They are not the same because it's a machine. So like this strip, put it right there. It's close, but it's not exact. So cutting and making it match. Now, if you didn't do that, it might work, but it's not gonna be as exact as this. So I did have to use tricks to make this work, but they're exactly two inches. And if this one was like, say, two and an eighth, and this one was two and a quarter, or whatever, when you're pinning, your fabric's gonna start waving, 100%. So that's how I get it exact. Let me show you the pattern again. It is by April Rosenthal. It's a, it's, I think it's a newer pattern, but I thought it was really cute. On the front, she has All Weather Friend by April Rosenthal. So that's an older fabric, I think. So I think this might be an older pattern. Um, and again, oh, you need, uh, to, you need 45 strips. So you need a little bit more than a jelly roll. 5 8 yard binding, three and a half yards backing. And um, this would be really cute, it, just like this. Like you could just bind this and put this in the middle of a table. Really cute. Um, let me see. The block turned out so cute, thank you. And okay, so this pattern is on fatquartershop.com, both as a pattern and a PDF, and it is in color, which is really nice because I always think that patterns in color are great. And another thing I wanted to show you, it also has great arrows. Now, obviously the arrows didn't work for me, but I think the reason they didn't work, I didn't read that text right there. I'm pretty sure that's where that was. That's a really bad quality of mine. I have several bad qualities. One of them is I don't ever read instructions ever. And um, in fact, a funny story of the week, because I have so many, is I had, I'm now the treasure or the, gonna be the treasurer of the dance thing, whatever. I had to do a Zoom call and I had a sales rep that was here, so I had to miss her meeting at her, not her meeting, but her like dinner. So I told Kevin, I was like, Kevin, um, I have to get on a Zoom call and I don't know how to do it. And he's like, you're kidding. You don't know how to get on Zoom? And I was like, no. He's like, well, how have you been doing it? I'm like, I walk over to your office and you do the Zoom. He always does it. He's been doing it for years. And he was like, well, you don't even have the app on your phone. I'm like, I know. So anyway, it was I was crossing, because he was going to be at dinner with the sales rep. And I was like, I really hope that I could get on this Zoom call, and I did, and I was so excited that I did it, because I usually can't figure that stuff out. Okay, so we're gonna take a break, but when we come back, we're gonna talk about the haunted um, Halloween mystery quilt along. We're gonna talk about gift certificate promotion, refer a friend, I'm gonna have a live stream next Tuesday night. We're gonna talk about that, and I'm gonna show you lots of new fabric. Um, so um, I will be back in about two minutes.
for uh, waiting. Okay, so let's talk about a couple new things in the shop. I'm gonna try to answer some questions. Um, this is the new Haunted Halloween Mystery Quilt Along. It is gonna start in June. The fabric just arrived this week. So starting in June, we're gonna release weekly video tutorials on this YouTube channel, so make sure you're subscribed. There will be completely free block patterns here and on um, the, it will be at fatquartershop.com. We will link them in the description box on YouTube videos and the patterns will also probably be linked from our blog. Our blog is the Jolly Jabber. Now this kit, we have sold 75% of them. So I'm just giving you a heads up. Um, but our first pattern, just so you know, will be June 6th. And I would say the pattern is beginner to intermediate. If you don't wanna use these fabrics and you wanna use your stash, you can now download the fabric requirements on um, our website, our blog, you can find it anywhere. The fabric here is Halloween, and the designer of Halloween is Urban Chicks and it is uh, by Moda. And so just so you know, we have quilt kits. If you ordered your quilt kit in advance, it has already shipped to you if your credit card processed. Um, so there's that. And there's a little tease. That's as much as I can show you. And then, okay, next Tuesday night. This week on Monday, so like three days ago, our Riley Blake sales rep came, and then on Tuesday, our Moda sales rep came. So I'm going to do a live stream next Tuesday night, and I'm going to go through everything that we bought at Fat Quarter Shop, and I'm going to show you the fabric. The two that I'm most excited to show you are Mercantile and Lovestruck. I'm going to flip through this, but I'm not going to give you any details, because for the details, you need to come watch that live stream. I'm not gonna give you any details. I'm gonna keep my mouth really quiet so that you have to come back. Oh my gosh, so cute. Just showing you a little bit. So there's a lot to look forward to. So you're gonna wanna come on Tuesday. And then for all our mothers out there, we have a gift card promotion. So you can save um, from now till Sunday, $5 off an email gift certificate of $50 or more and the discount will automatically apply to your order so you can do that it expires this sunday at uh, midnight central time another thing that we have going is for our refer a friend program we increase that for a limited limited time so right now if you refer a friend to fat quarter shop and they place an order you get a coupon for 20 percent off your next order now they have to be a new customer not an existing customer. Um, and so there's different ways you can access it. You can go to, on the left-hand side of our site, there's that big pink thing that says limited time, 20% off. You can do it there. You click it and you fill that out. You can also go to the bottom left of our website where it says give 10, get 20% off and do that. And it'll give you that same form. Or if you're logged into your account, under your account dashboard, on the very second to the bottom, it says refer a friend, you can fill it out there. Okay, so now I have something to tell y'all that's fresh breaking news that they don't even know about. So we were just talking about CrimeCon, right? When I go to the bathroom, yes, I take my phone, and yes, I look. I was looking for updates from, Jet, from Nate Eaton for Lori Daybell, but in my email, Dun, da, da, da. You're gonna die. I love it. Crime Cruise winner. Hi, Kimberly. Congratulations. You were selected as our Crime Cruise photo hashtag winner. You've won two badges to Crime Con Orlando. What the heck? Oh, I guess I'm going. I don't know. Like, if you're gonna give me two free badges to come to Orlando, I'm going. So now I'm so excited. I gotta figure it out. Can you believe that? Oh my God. I won something. I never win anything. Okay, so we have some new quilt kits I'm going to show you. The first one is called Freesia. It is designed by Jocelyn, and um, this is an It's So Emma pattern. I wanted to show you that it comes in full color, very detailed instructions. This has instructions for a table runner, a throw, a lap, or a queen size. 
and this is what we put on the back. This fabric right here is Union Square by Minnick and Simpson, and on this one, in the kit, the triangle paper is included, and the two inch um, by four inch flying geese paper is included. And then we'll, um, this one was pieced by Nova and Joanna Marsh quilted it. And we are still planning to do a blog post where we list all of the qu quilters that we use and then link to them so that you can easily find them. And then this is actually Kevin's request. So Kevin really thinks that we should grow our business by expanding into boutiques. You guys can comment and let me know if you agree. Now, this is our very first video that we did on boutiques. And um, when Robert Kaufman, one of the, well, when the sales rep came from Robert Kaufman, I just really liked this collection. And I said, you know, I think this one would be really good in a kit because it's so bright. Sometimes boutiques are muted. And so I said, well, so I asked Jocelyn to come and look, and she designed this. And um, they'll see the collection is Floral Fantasy. And so this is our very first boutique video. And we used to do boutique kits a long time ago, and they kind of stopped selling. So if this one sells great, then we can kind of expand and keep adding um, some boutique kits. Now, and we can also add videos. The great thing about when we worked with boutiques is the fabric's already pre-shrunk. So you really don't even have to starch it if you don't want to. And that's something I really didn't know until we did the video. And this one, designed by Jocelyn, Riley pieced it and Joanna Marsh quilted it. It is a completely free pattern available at fatquartershop.com and you can also watch the video. And this one finishes at 50 by 60 and it's one size. The Halloween quilt size. Thirty one by thirty two. Okay, so I wanted to let you know we got a huge shipment in and um one oh eights have been kind of hit or miss if that makes sense. Like when you get them, you get a lot because they come from one mill in a certain country. And so we just got a ton of Tula Pink, some old, some new. We got some Tim Holtz. So I thought I would show you because we actually have it in stock. So this one is Moon Garden by Tula Pink 108. This is also Moon Garden and it's really soft. This one is True Colors. And this is an older one that we just got back in stock, I believe, if I, I think I'm right. And that's the white, and this is the whisper. So I'm gonna put those, I'm gonna kinda stack them up and then we'll show them all at the end. They take up a lot of space in boxes, I'll tell you that. Oh, this one is neon true colors. The color is Peacock. This one is also True Colors. This is Hexy. These are both Hexy. This is Peacock. This is Ink. This one is Snowfall Fairy Flakes from Neon True Colors. So Neon True Colors is new. And then this is Snowfall Hexy. So this one is the same print as these. So that is eight bolts that are from uh, Tula Pink. But so what's interesting is we got a huge shipment in. Well, we got the new and we got the old and I was like, oh, I should show people because it's really hard to get, stack them up. Oh, uh, it's gonna look good. We're gonna make Jordan have a workout. Oh my God, don't make it fall. Okay, let me see those. Okay, let's look at these first before Look how, look how tall it is. I can't even see myself, but. Okay, so there's the tulip pink. We're gonna put them away so I don't, they don't fall over. Cause if I do that, they're gonna fall over. Okay, oh, they're heavy. We also got some Tim Holtz. So this is the Eclectic Elements 108. This is Neutral Dictionary. 
And Tim Holtz, just so you know, we keep all of his fabric that is in print. We always keep it on order because his stuff is like a commodity. This one is called Blue Memorandum. Now, I will tell you, the Tula Pinks are softer. They're on a different gray good. So they're on a different base of cloth. And there is a huge difference between the quality of hers and his. And I'm, I don't know if they're the same price. I don't know. This is still perfectly fine. I'm just saying the, uh, this is like normal. I would say it's a little bit boardier, but that is like super, Tula's is super soft. And this one is a neutral time return. So this one's kind of cool because it's got like time, time sheets, I think. Time return and daily report of engine and train employees. So, so those are some new 108s. So I'm excited to be able to show you those because it's really hard to get them. And then we have a ton of new fabric. So this week has been crazy with uh, new fabric. So we're getting a lot of Moda and we're getting a lot of Riley Blake right now. So one thing that you probably know if you watch us is Halloween and Christmas for Moda and Riley Blake start shipping in May. This one right here is Halloween Half Yard Bundle. This is the same collection as the Haunted Halloween. Now, this would not work for the quilt kit because it's different fabrics and just so you know, because I know that's gonna be the next question. Now, these, I can already tell you once the half yards are bundled, sorry, after like an hour, I start fumbling my words. I can already tell you once the half yard bundles sell out, they're gonna be gone forever because several of the prints have already sold out. This is Spellbound by Sweet Fire Road, Half Yard Bundle. And on this one, this is the second collection that Lisa Bonjean is using on her Twilight Stars, yeah, Twilight Stars quilt along. So those are two Halloween Moda. This is Jolly Good, Half Yard Bundle by Basic Gray. And this is Good News, Great Joy, Half Yard Bundle by Basic Gray. So lots of new Moda came in. So basically on these, like the, we cut these in house. So you can tell because it has this on it. But so that means we have all the bolts and that means we probably have all the pre-cuts too because the pre-cuts usually arrive first. Okay, now this I'm super excited about. Every year for the last, I think this will probably be the third or fourth year that um, Layla Boutique does a panel. This one is called Tis the Season to be Jolly, so I'm gonna open it. It comes pre-packaged 58 inches by 73. Okay. And um, next week, I'm gonna send this off to a quilter. So, the reason I love it is because it has my name, Jolly. So it's nice and big. I actually use this, the ones that are this size in my chair when I stitch in my bedroom. So it says, tis the season to be jolly. But that would kind of fit in my house all the time. So what I'm gonna do is the yardage for this. This is the Christmas Eve collection. So the panel came first, the yardage is arriving Monday. And when we load the yardage, I'm gonna put a green plaid, I think, on the edge. I'm gonna put platinum cuddle solid on the back and um, I'm gonna send it to a quilter. And one thing to know is when you put Shannon on the back, which is that fuzzy stuff, you know, the, the, the quilting can't be super small. And these are the one, these are the quilts, these panel quilts, I wash them all the time. So I will tell you that, that is the quilt that I do wash. Um, we are still getting requests for more. Y'all are still wanting more and more Lori bundles that are smaller because most of her collections have 40 pieces. So um, we put together a smaller bundle of the Calico collection. So just a, like, you know, two purples, two browns, two grays, kind of like that is kind of how we went with it. So a smaller bundle of Calico. There are... Um, 
you know, the full collection we still have in stock, but I made a smaller bundle of this. Now, this is Fairy Dust by Tula Pink. I'm going to show it to you. Now, Fairy Dust started with this skew. It's white. It's not ombre, but it's very multi. And um, then she added more skews. So now these are the amount of skews she has. We have this in yardage, half yard bundle, and we also have fat quarter bundles. And I think this might have already been a color, too. So if you guys like Tula Pink, this is now in stock, which is very exciting. But this will outsell everything. And you know what's really funny is um, with the Everglow, of course, we sold, even though we bought a ton of it, we sold out of some of it. And the number one piece that sold out was the Hippo, which I would have never guessed. I, I mean, because I do pay, I mean, yeah. This is Haunted, ha Haunted Adventure by Bev McCullough for Riley Blake, and it's a cute kind of novelty-ish line. This is Autumn Harvest Flannel by Bonnie Sullivan for Maywood, and I wanted to talk a little bit about this. I, um, this is the best flannel we've ever carried and probably will ever carry. Maywood is really known for their flannel. So when I started this company and I was working out of my house, I was cutting this flannel and I'm not kidding. She used to have something called bulk. It is so soft. If you want to buy a flannel, you want to buy a Maywood flannel. Um, and Bonnie Sullivan has been a designer since I started. So longer than, she's been around longer than me. So I just wanted to kind of point that out because there is different qualities of flannel. And it's just, this is very different for us. But this is something that even though it's not something, um, this will probably sell out. But it's nice, rich, deep colors. That's not my stomach, by the way, it's someone else. Someone's hungry. But I just thought you'd like to see it. I mean, the quality is so good. And then on the back, you can just tell. If you just, like if you ever go in a quilt shop, you should touch made with flannel. Because it's really nice. And the colors really, um, sometimes when you look at a flannel like a black, you'll see white in it. You'll see specks of white for because the, the quality's not great. So... This one's really nice. It's different for us, but it's something that anytime she has a flannel, we try to buy it. Now I feel bad somebody has to refold this. Okay, we just got in new Ju Judy Rothermole, and we haven't had a collection from her in a while. This is called Vintage Charm, and uh, this comes in yardage fat quarter bundles and half yard bundles. I'm not sure if she's retiring or just doing less collections, but we used to get like four a year from her. Now we get one or two. This is the brand new, okay, this is gonna be really popular. This is art gallery fabric. This is called Spooky and Witchy. One of these skews, one of these black skews was in their very last collection. I don't remember which one, the reason I know is when we loaded it, there were already five reviews on the fabric, and I was like, I'm very confused. Why are there five reviews? It's the same skew as a previous. And they do, uh, Art Gallery does one Christmas collection a year, one Halloween collection a year. So it always will sell because it's, you know, they don't do two, they do one. And Art Gallery fabric is really nice quality. It's tightly woven. And soft. So we're just getting a lot of fabric. I would not starch flannels, so I would definitely not. Okay, this one is Wander Lane. This is Nancy Halverson. So Nancy Halverson was super popular 15, 10 years ago, and then she retired, and then she unretired. Sorry, I'm, I know I'm making a mess. Um, but she has, she has always had wonderful books that are beautiful that combine um, piecing and applique, and they really appeal to young and old. 
And so this is a new collection from her. And we're excited that she has new collections because she's always been a really good seller. Her and anytime Eleanor Burns has a fabric collection, which I haven't seen one in a long time, those always sell really good. And this is the part I like right here. It's it, This is basically the Wonder Lane print. So, so that's new. So we have from all different manufacturers this week. We have some new patterns. Okay, so Layla Boutique, like I said, Christmas Eve collection arriving Monday. This is her giving season project sheet to make the pillow. These are actually from the next collection. I was wrong. These are from uh, her Christmas ones already came out. This is the Christmas one that goes with that. But her new fabric that goes with Love Struck, which I'm going to talk about on Tuesday, have come out. The fabric is not going to come out until I'll tell you. I'll tell you Tuesday. This is Wild Hair. Stairway to Heaven, Flutter, Iconic, and Love Day. So these are now in stock, paper, and PDF. Fancy that house designs. Dawn on the Prairie. This is her collection that is going to be shipping. It might have already arrived, but it's shipping around now. These are four patterns. Prairie Stars, Daybreak, Pillow Bundle, and Prairie Picnic. I did want to point out on the Prairie Pillow, these are panels right here. So this wouldn't be an applique pattern. From Basic Gray, this is the Christmas collection I just showed. The Half Yard Bundle of Tis the Season, shiny and bright and baubles and stars and so fabric requirements are on the back and here's the collection and then we actually had run out of these string blades these are on my machine at home and here and um, we had them remade just because you guys asked for them they're super inexpensive and you just um, put them on your sewing machine they won't leave a residue you can just pull it off and let's see okay we're gonna do a giveaway but i'm not gonna do that yet i'm gonna answer your questions so we've got let's see let's go back to the old questions do i watch 48 hours yes anything that's okay so my rule is it has to be real it has to be non-exploitative to the victims and i will watch it if it is fiction i will not watch it and if it's somebody that's trying to be drama or stuff like that i don't watch it the pressed flowers quilt kit sold out we cannot make more the fabric that the block i just made was from the simply delightful collection and this is called what what's this called easy street so these are easy street jelly rolls and but if you want to make it with the full collection you can buy the full jelly roll too can Kimberly give us Simmer Memories update using triangle paper? Does she cut her pattern pieces different than the sizes written? Okay, so Summer Memories update will be the last week of the month. Well, let me show that calendar one more time. So I will give an update on the last Friday of the month on that. But I am using H150, and that's the size I'm using. I'm not trimming down. Who am I taking with me to Crime Con? Well, definitely not Kevin. Definitely not Kevin. He, he's not fun. He would not go to that. He thinks it's ridiculous. I can't even believe I won. I'm like, is that a joke? I reserved the Roly Poly and Bountiful Blooms through Fat Quarter Shop. Do you know when they will be released? Bountiful Blooms. I think it's June. Let's see. I think it's June. It may be July. September. So it'll ship in September. So the way that works is Moda ships it to us. And then when it hits, like when we check it in, we run the orders right then and they ship out. I love bright batiks. Okay, great feedback. Can triangle paper be used for batiks? Yes. I wouldn't use triangle paper with flannel, but any chance you'll do everything with Tula Pink? Yes, I have something planned. It's big. I'm not sure. It might be exclusive to Fat Core Shop. It might be It's So Emma. It is amazing. It is going to take us a, quite a bit to roll it out because once we design something, we have to get 
I'm gonna get notions made for this, a pattern made for this, and I have to get a kit made for this. So it is gonna be far out, but it is gonna be amazing, and I'm gonna sew it. Do I get Bel Bella Silky Solids? Yes, we carry all Bella. And the way you know if it is a silky solid is if there's an S at the end of the SKU. So if you ordered 9900-98, but you want the silky version, you would add S to that. Do I ever use linen? I bought some and wonder if it wrinkles in a quilt. Mm, I don't think it'll wrinkle. There's some new linen, um, there's some new home deck coming from Lori that I'm gonna put on the back of a quilt. So I, I put that on the back of quilts before. Will I be getting the collection of linen low volume? I absolutely will. You can pre-buy it now at Fat Quarter Shop and I will be showing it Tuesday night. Can you describe the feeling of canvas panel? Which canvas panel? So the, let me, the Christmas panel I showed you is not canvas, it is cotton, right? Yeah, so this is not canvas. Canvas these days is much thinner than it used to be. But um, I don't think I showed anything canvas panel today. Are you gonna have a Patriotic Jolly Box this year? Yes, and it's amazing. I just saw the insert for it. What was the new Lori Holt bundle called on your site? Huh? <laughs> Calico Lori Holt Stash Builder Fat Quarter Bundle. Can I mix flannel and regular fabric when piecing? Um, you could, I, I would be scared to do it. Have I considered putting together a bundle of light blues and reds for the basket sew along book? Summer picnic, we had some and they sold out and then we had some more that we recommended. Quilting cotton, what is the thread count? So when we are presented fabric to sell, they don't say it usually. But like Art Gallery will say on their web, like if you go to Art Gallery's website, it'll say like it's a 60 by 60 or 100 by 100. So I never pay attention to that because we only sell the high quality. It's not, I think that Art Gallery's is probably the most thread count, but you can find that on the manufacturer's site. Do I ever make fat quarter bundles of the cap set colorways? I used to, I don't do that as much anymore. What is a string blade? Can I show on that? Okay, so it's right here. And see, it's hard, it won't come off. Maybe it will leave a residue. Well, you could use um, Goo Gone. So when you're cutting and you have like a, well, let me do it with this and make more sense. You can cut your thread. Are I, am I planning a sew along for Jolly Holiday with Christmas Eve? Yes. Is it with, yes. Mm -hmm. what? The one with the Santa in the middle, yes. And that kit is going online Monday if you pre-bought it. Does flannel shrink very much? Well, what we did, Teresa did a test for us and, and um, she starched flannel and she didn't think it stretched much, but it also, it like left, or, like the starch really stayed on there. It was very residue-y. So she recommended not doing starch. Um, I have a picture of Emma to show you. Yes, I know she needs to put on more clothes. Don't tell me, I already know. <laughs> um, but that is us last night. So she won an award for the second most Devo hours. So that was exciting. And that was me wearing a dress. And I wore that dress to work yesterday and everybody told me 20 times how they'd never seen me in a dress. And I was like, well, if you keep saying that, I'm never gonna wear one again. That is annoying. Um, okay, so we're gonna give away one trust fall pattern two easy street jelly rolls, which are simply delightful junior jelly rolls to three winners. So I think this will be a great question. So for Mother's Day, I actually asked for rose bushes, but somebody told me this morning that it's gonna flood, so I don't know that that's gonna work. So I might ask them to, because if even if it rains, they can still clean my garage. That's what I'm asking for for Mother's Day. So you can comment, we're gonna pick three winners next week. What was the best gift you gave or received for Mother's Day? And I hope all of you have a wonderful Mother's Day, and I will see you guys Tuesday night. Don't forget to tune in. Tuesday night, 7 p.m. Central Time.